the con. On King! On you, Husky! The water dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Presson as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in sight of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge and justice ruled triumphant. The small roadhouse of Jan Peters on the trail to Dawson City held very distinguished visitors one night in early winter. Mr. Williams, a mining engineer from San Francisco, and his daughter, Mary. They sat before the huge stove in the big cab after supper, and Mary's father smiled as he saw how eagerly his daughter listened to old Jan. Yep, I've been up here in the North Country for a good many years. I never expect to leave it. It's fascinating. I've never seen such mountains and vast stretches of snow. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. You were lucky getting a man like Big John to bring you here. He'd make anybody's trip easy. He's the best guide I know. He can certainly handle a dog team and make a camp. Him too. He never question anything he does or orders him to do. How did you happen to get Big John? Well, the Mountie met us in Selkirk. Uh, this guy was with him and the Mountie made the deal with him for us. This Mountie... He wasn't a big fella, about six feet four. Uh, Sergeant Preston? Oh, yes. Yes, that was his name. I guess you'd be surprised if I told you that Big John led Sergeant Preston on a long chase once, helping a murderer escape. What? Right? Really? Yep, it's true. Do you mean to tell me that that Mountie would send us up here with a criminal? <laughs> no, no, not Sergeant Preston. He's the best Mountie in the country. Big John ain't a criminal. He and the sergeant are the best friends. But you said... Oh, please tell us about it. Uh, I've told it hundreds of times. Because I heard it from both Sergeant Preston and Big John. People up here like to hear stories. The only pastime we have. Everybody likes to hear stories. Well, guess I'd better tell you about Big John first. As I said before, John's father was part white. And John inherited the big frame and the brains of his white grandfather, who was a fur trader from the States. John had a young brother... About five years younger than he was. His father died when they were pretty young. So John more or less took care of the kid and his mother. His brother's name was Imago. John was crazy about the kid. Acted more like his father than his brother. Imago was a bad one. He lied and stole. Nobody liked him. Didn't Big John know it? No, he didn't. And for a very good reason. The first time anyone told him, there was fireworks. John had come home from a hunting trip and was met by Black Eagle, one of the tribes. What? Ah, what? Big John, you stop. Oh, 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 oh. Do what? You have good hunt. Plenty meat. Get many fur in trap. See? Big John maybe give half to Black Eagle. Black Eagle want to trade? Give furs to Black Eagle. Or furs your brother Mago steal from him to trade for firewater. Black Eagle call my brother thief. He is thief. He... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Big John, oh. Get up. Get up, you dog. Get up, I say. <laughs> no. uh, you will see what happened to him who called my brother thief. <laughs> <laughs> After that, no one dared tell Big John about the way his young brother carried on. John was powerful and had beaten Black Eagle within an inch of his life. Imago got worse and worse. But none of his doings reached the ears of his older brother. Short time later, Big John got a chance to take some prospectors up to Dawson. He weighed nearly two months. It was during that time that Sergeant Preston was called into headquarters to investigate a murder. Glad you got that in your patrol in time to take over this case, Sergeant. We uh, have two witnesses who saw the killing. It was an Indian named Imago. Been drinking and killed this prospector in front of two white men. Is uh, 
The Mago from the Indian village north of here, sir. Yes. He is very well liked by the members of his tribe. I doubt that you'll have much trouble finding out where he went if you question him. I'll go to the village at once, sir. I'll take supplies and carry on from there. Hello, Black Eagle. How? I'm looking for a friend of yours, Imago. Imago, not my friend. Oh? You know where he is? Imago, leave fast. Him go trail north. Him try me brother. His brother's the man called Big John? Uh, who no catch Imago if him meet Big John. Big John, best guy to north. Well, thank you, Black Eagle. I'm certainly going to try. Untangle! On your husband! It was just about that time that Imago met Big John on the trail, about 20 miles from the Indian village. Big John leering home and traveling light. He halted his team as Imago stepped up in front of him on the trail. Oh! 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 Big John, at last I find you. Imago, what is wrong? Where you go? Man in town. He tried to kill me. We fight. I, I hit him. He fall. Now white man's law tried to get me. Big police fellow come. You tell white men what happened. I try. They say hang me. I run. White men not hang you. Come. You go to North Country. White men not find you if you with Big John. Sergeant Preston had taken the trail north. It was well traveled. And the trail of Imago had disappeared under the tracks of many sleds. He was about 15 miles out of town when he saw two figures beside a huge rock. He halted his team and approached them. Okay. Oh, you Hello. Anything I can do? Molly. You can help me get this man on my dog sled, Sergeant. Found him wounded here beside the trail. Who are you? I'm Zeb Hunter. This man is Pete Grimes. He's been stabbed. Oh? Yeah, it was a half breed. He he jumped me from behind this rock. Took my supplies. Are you badly hurt? He got him in the shoulder. I can get him back to town, all right. Are these the tracks of the half breed? Yes, I think he went north. I see. He's going to make it easier for me. I think the man who stabbed you is the man I'm after. Now I'll have a trail to follow. Come on, Pete. I'll help you on the sled. John was wise in the ways of the trail. He covered his tracks well. And Sergeant Preston lost time finding it again. Seven days had passed. The Imago was getting sullen. Only a few days of supplies were left. The winter was bad that year. There wasn't much game. John knew better than to spend too much time hunting. They were mushing along near the mountains when all of a sudden, Big John fell. <laughs> You all right? My foot, I, I step in hole. My ankle, it, it broke, I think. You try stand. Here I help. Oh, no, no. I, I cannot. What do we do? We may have. You build fire. Maybe I can fix foot. You help me over there beside rock. Bad luck. Slows down. Here, yeah, it's all right. Now, now you get firewood. Yeah. Goodbye, Big John. Hey, Mago, what you mean? Good enough for only one. Eskimo village far away. Gosh, gosh, you Mago, you Mago, come back, come back. It was a pretty bitter moment for Big John. He knew then that his brother was everything people said, the thief and the murderer. But he didn't have much time to think, because far away and then closer he heard them. Timber wolves. Big John had his knife, but his gun was on the dog sled. He crawled around on his hands and knees and gathered a few dry sticks and managed to start a small fire, but he knew it was no use. What he didn't know was that a few miles away that fire was sighted. 
Sergeant Preston and an Eskimo guide stood on a high knoll, and the Mountie turned his binoculars on the fire, while King, his big dog, whined eagerly at his side. I can't see who it is, but it's one man all by himself. Uh, it's bad if him alone. Hear that? Can't be a muggo, a big John. No sign of a dog, Dean. It may be Trapper. Whoever it is, he's in trouble. It's a very small... He won't camp here, Kenny. He got there fast. Up front, King! On, King! On, your husband! Big John sat with his back against the rock. He held his knife in his hand and waited... Three big wolves sat watching him across the little fire. Their green eyes gleamed, and as the fire died, they crouched and crawled closer on their bellies. They were lean and starved and slightly mad with hunger. And then, as the fire died down, the biggest one sprang. Big John met it in the air with his knife ready, and then suddenly he heard a rifle shot, and he saw the gray shape of a huge dog spring at one of the wolves coming at him from the side. There goes the other one. You all right, man? You you come. Just in time. I was afraid we wouldn't make it. Who are you? Me, Big John. Big John? But you're the one we're after. Where's your brother? Him go. Me break ankle. You mean he went off and left you here, helpless? Me think men lie about him all go. Me not know him bad. I know he's your brother, Big John. But Amago has killed him, and we're going to get him, and you're... We'll make camp here tonight, and I'll fix your ankle. Me owe you my life. Your dog and you saved me from wolves. Now me help you. For the next three days, the chase went on. They pulled the sergeant down a lot, carrying Big John on the sled, but they made up for it by Big John's knowledge of the country. It was the third day... And they were nearing a trail that led up a mountain when suddenly they heard a shot and a bullet whizzed past the sled. Okay, hurry, you husky. All behind the sled, Kenny. You, Big John, get down here beside me. That Imago. He's up there behind rock. That shot come close. Look, those shots started an avalanche. the end of Amago. It better this way. It better that Martin kill Amago. Yes, John. I'm glad it happened, too. Well, come on, we'll go back now. And so Sergeant Preston and Big John got to know each other. The Mountie never arrested him for trying to save his brother. And since then, Big John would die for Sergeant Preston. This is an amazing country, isn't it? It's a hard country... What a wonderful one. Are there many stories as exciting as that one about it? Millions of them. I could tell you dozens about Sergeant Preston and that big dog of his. There's one thing sure. If a man has committed a crime, there's one thing he hates to hear. And that's Sergeant Preston coming after him through the snow, his voice ringing out in the stillness. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Larry McCann speaking. This is a Michigan...